Welcome to Intense or Insane in Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who are joining us from Chess and Psychology, thank you for staying this long. For those of you who are new, welcome. So, I have a bunch of studies prepared and some easy, basic endgames. And um, <laughs> I like the. We should have a chess and music. Um, so, I'm just gonna review some super basic concepts and then we'll just jump into it. All right, whoops, that is not the super basic concept I was going for. Okay, this one. My stuff is a little, hold on, sorry. Uh, technical, all right. We are good to go. So, um, do you think this end game is winning, draw, lost? Okay. Does everybody think it's lost? What, who's, who's to move? Uh, white. If it was black to move, black would just. So, it is white to move. Okay, um, so generally the end games, queen versus one pawn and the pawn on the seventh rank, um, it is usually, I don't know why it says seven, it should be going this way. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Hold on, Which? sorry. All right, let's look at this. This is more accurate. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so generally end games queen versus one pawn um, when this pawn is on H or F file it's a draw uh, because so in this position um, if right now it's white to move white is a stalemate can't move the pawn can't move the king so a black could try to bring the queen closer but it's never gonna be enough because the king is also very far if the king was slightly closer then yes this would have been winning for black but right now black there's no way for black to try and progress so if this pawn if this queen sorry if this pawn was on a G file in a uh, pawn versus a queen end game. Now this is winning. Can someone tell me how? It is black to move. So this, the simple way to think about it is you want your king and your queen to be as close to the um, white king as possible. So how can you try to do that to, um, without letting white make the queen? Yeah, that's that should be the idea. So yes, that is the idea. The simplest way to do it is to go close to the king, so the king can't really get out, and you're also attacking the pawn. And as soon as king moves, regardless of which side it goes, you give the check, still attacking the pawn. Now bring your king closer, and then you keep doing the same thing, and 
uh, eventually your, your king will be close enough to try and either eat the pawn or let's see for example you just bring in your king you just bring in your king and you just eventually eat the pawn so now that we know how to win against the pawn on g file uh, let's look at how to win when there is the pawn on a file a or h the rook file so the problem is you can't really bring your king close because white king doesn't have any room to go go to so ideally in that situation that we were looking at uh, when there was the pawn on g file you if this if there was another file here that white king could go to this is when you would bring your king right but now you can't do that because it's a stalemate so there's no way for you to try and bring your king closer without either stalemate or um, just trying to bring the king now there's the queen so you simply can't bring your king closer now if the um, if the king was a slightly closer you could actually try to bring um, win this game because now you bring your queen as close as possible now you go with the king now the thing is in this specific situations when both king and the queen um, are like in the L positions with the king with the opposite colored king um, making a queen, king b6 wins because there is no way that white can avoid mate. So this, these are some of the ideas to keep in mind when you're looking at queen end games. And let's look at what if the pawn was on f line. So if the pawn was on the bishop's file, the problem is. Actually, let me ask first. Does anybody want to take a shot at what the problem is? Yeah, that the problem that um, black can't win. It's a draw. Yeah, because um, when you would bring remember how ideally you wanted to bring your queen closer when the pawn was on like g file and the problem is yes if black were t if white were to bring the king under the pawn again now you can bring your king closer but the trick is that after something like check over here black simply puts the king in the corner and you can't take the pawn because it's a stalemate So like these are the the little stuff to remember when you're doing queen um, queen versus pawn and games, and all right. Without further ado, we did our fundamental part. Let's jump into the practical part. So, whoops. So we talked about some ideas about putting the king in the corner. That like L, like having both of your king and queen. Uh, on L position to your opponent's king to try and mate. Wow. What's going on out there? I have no idea. Anyways, <laughs> so um, try to think how can you put uh, the king in the corner? It's a salt trap, you said? Okay. It was hitting the windows. Oh, it's white to move. So usually if that one up there says one dot, it's white. If it's three dots, then it's black to move. So 
Yes. So, you can check the key. Where? I like that idea. Uh, the king can only go to a3, right? Because if king a4, just queen gives another check on a5 and picks up the queen. So, what now? So what are the moves that you're trying to achieve? What is the ideal setup that you're trying to achieve? that idea uh, I think Queen a5 might be more accurate because it kind of forces the king to go to b2 um, but so now what so you kind of want to keep the king in the corner so most likely your next move is also going to be a check with the queen yeah, to force to be, uh, b4. Mm, and if king a2 So it's the same idea that we were talking about, that um, ideally you want to have that king cornered and I wish I could like flip the board, but I don't think I can. Um, but if you look at it as if, um, hypothetically, if this were actually instead of a one square, this um, like the pawn could go up like this. if after king c2, um, I might make it too complicated, I don't want to confuse you, but so the idea is that if this pawn were here and made a queen and your king was on c3, you were, were just to play king c2, the same thing I was telling you about having your king and queen in like knight pos in the L and or like the knight position to your opponent's king so that as soon as they make the queen you bring the king to c2 take away these square for queen no more check and now you have different kinds of mate so it's the same idea it might be a little hard to picture it 
um, when the, there's actual queen in the board instead of the pawn becoming a queen but yeah so does it make sense for everybody I hope I didn't confuse you um, what if king goes to c1 Mm -hmm. Yeah, so simple mates. All right, perfect. Okay, so this is pawn and game, but it's not gonna stay pawn and game. It's gonna uh, queens are gonna come in. So it's black to move. Black kind of has to push the pawn, right? That doesn't. It's not even a question at this point. So try to think and calculate. Um, how can white win and or if white is winning well technically up there it says win so I can't really trick you with that but so yeah try to calculate and it does uh, with queen end games like queen versus queen like simply just queen versus queen there's not that many ideas to keep track of that's um, the idea that we looked at in the previous game at previous puzzle it's pretty much the main one to look out for. I mean, to, to win, obviously, they have to push their pawn. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> mm, yeah, of course, but mm, mm, I was trying to get you to, to actually find the mate before we set it on the board or find the when or yeah. one way to think in pawn end games is instead of thinking all right if i play a4 he will play h4 and do like one by one you can think how many moves do i need so you can think yeah so you can simply think i need one two three four five to make a queen and give a check Just whoops this is in the same diagonal I mean that's and black needs one two three four moves so when I make my so pretty much you you have five moves to make a queen black has four moves but it's your move so as soon as black makes the queen you are also going to make a queen so instead of thinking about a4 h4 a5 h3 you could just count it as I need this many moves my opponent has this many moves So do we all have the clear picture of black has a queen on h1, white has a queen on a8, giving a check? Everybody good on that? Yes. Okay, cool. So in that position, um, the king can only go two places, g1 and h2, right? So try to think how or if you can actually achieve that... Um, dream of kings um, that like L, L idea like the double L idea if you, how can you achieve that Yeah, it shouldn't. Sure. Basically, the idea is that you kind of have to come up with some way to bring the queen close enough so the king can't escape, and then you would just bring your king in front of the opponent's king. It's just you have to be careful how you get there. 
I could I could move the pieces and we could have the queen set up if you would prefer. Sure. Okay. So Okay, so we we were at this position. Now, if the king goes to g1, how do you get to that dream position? Be careful because the queen g2 blocks and gives a check. Queen goes to a7. Yeah, I also think maybe queen a1 would work. King h2, queen like e5. Probably that should also work. Let's see. Um, queen, I think this also should be good enough. The only problem, I mean, not really a problem. If you go here, I, I can just take c7. Queen a1 might be just a little faster because now you get to bring the queen closer and closer, and now the king f2 and win, right? Cool. Okay, um, this is a little too theoretical, um, but the idea is that you simply want to trap the knight, and it is possible. So um, we could just go over it, or we, you could take a minute or two and try to find it on your own, and then we'll go over it. One tiny piece of advice that um, in in um, rook versus knight, it is a good idea to have the rook um, in this type of positions, like because if the rook is um, one square away from this, like diagonal wise, does it make sense? Because it's kind of paralyzing the knight. See, the knight can't go to f d2, d4, e5, and g5 because of this rook. So it is a good idea to have it away, like the one, like one away from the, in the same diagonal, but just one square away. Yeah. So we're going to move the king closer to the knight? Uh, ideally, yeah, that's, that's the idea. You would want to come and pick up the knight with the king. You could try and push the knight farther back or more in the corner. See, you said king b5. I don't think it's wrong, but I kind of it kind of feels a little off. He would prefer to have the king come closer, and I understand that king b5 you're trying to tie up uh, the, the other king's hands a little. But what about a move such as rook f5? Now, if the knight goes to d2, try to apply the same logic of rook in the same diagonal, just like one square away. When the knight was on f3, your rook on d5 was very strong, right? It was kind of tying the knight's hands. So what about now, the knight on d2, how can you try and tie the knight's hand up? Move the rook to f4. 
Yeah. So the idea is simple. After rook f4, you just want to bring your king in with probably king b4, king c3, something like that. So if something like king mm, knight b3, just king b4, now the knight is still stuck. And now the knight wants to jump to like d3 or e2. Just bring the king to c4. If knight e2, again, rook g4. So you still keep those critical squares. And now you just come and pick up the knight. Yeah? And if here, instead of check, king goes to a6, you still come, cut the king, and you want to still play king c3, you're still cutting the, um, the knight, and now you pick it up. Did it make sense? I feel like you have in in your game. Um, if you haven't heard about this like idea of like where the rook should be, it's kind of hard to think about it. So, hopefully next time something like this happens, you know what to do. And okay. So was that in, the, in some Arabic manuscript? Or something? <laughs> um, uh, kinda, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like. <laughs> I did, I, um, I don't even remember from where, but it was like s so many years ago, 20, or something. yeah, these are like, it says it's for 1600, so I hope that's oh, true, but, um, <laughs> no, for me, like, uh, maybe about, I think it was 2012, 13, 14, one of those years that I was trying to figure out more puzzles to do at home, I uh, ended up with these and there are like 26,000 of them yeah I never finished it so yeah so I tried to collect the ones that seem more relevant and doable okay it's white to move this one should be easy peasy the king is already in the corner you just need to bring more reinforcement to mate it Thank you. Okay, this one, um, it does say draw, so let's respect that. <laughs> but be careful because um, here, you are, if it's black to move, black is picking up your rook and also kind of giving you checkmate. So you kind of have to come up with something a little sneaky to block off the mate and not give up the rook. Um, uh, you won't be giving it for free. I mean, you won't be losing after giving it up, <laughs> if that makes sense. Oh, yes. All right. 
Right. So root to um, h five. This? Mm-hmm. Yeah. After take, check and pick the rook up. Yeah. A little tricky, right? Yeah. You might have actually, re- I mean, you might actually like see that in the game and resign and yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, white to move, pretty easy. Think about checks and mates. Yeah, so it's just mother mate, right? And mate. Yep. Yeah. After seeing something hard makes it kind of nice to see easy. All right, this is also white to move. It is a draw and white's pawns are going that way, black's pawns coming this way. Good luck. Yeah. So I just want to bring in the king. Right? Yes. And if I move the bishop, still king c7 should do it. Right? Now if you push, push. If queen, queen already draw. If take and then queen, we know that um, these all draw. So, the p- oh, little tricky thing. If you play king a8, your opponent could bring in the king like this. So, don't do that. And then we'll get to that anywhere actually but so yeah be careful when uh, there's a chance for um, that if black w- if your opponent could bring the king to take care of stalemates be careful about that and so just go to the other way and now you want to make a queen so the queen has to move and now you bring in the king so the king is too far and this is a draw Next one, any questions? Cool. Not exactly an end game, but it's pretty cool. Wanna do it? I don't know what is it doing here, but it's a pretty cool one. We should be able to do it, right? Most likely. Yeah. Probably also because I said it's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so we want to take this, I think, right? And now what? Well, the, uh, Find the most accurate win.
you do have to move the knight but if knight e6 king no. comes to h7 and then rook g7 king h6 then you have maybe bishop c1 yeah i like that uh, i was thinking about knight takes f7 i think that should also be because if knight f7 yeah um i mean king has to take knight now. yeah or if king either one is made king takes rook g7 king h7 rook g7 either one is made so like knight e6 also should be winning but i mean i can keep going <laughs> And yeah, it's not the most clean win you've seen in your life, but it's still pretty cool. All right. White to move. And the pawn is becoming a queen for black. I'm gonna give you one tip um, if you're thinking about something kind of like straightforward don't think about how to annoy your opponent like make sure the king is kind of stuck somewhere can't move Ideally, because if it's white, if it was black to move, all right, let's say white does something, and when you go try to hunt down this pawn, the king is just in time yeah. to, yeah, to get under here, and it's this will be a draw, right? because now your king is the one that's kind of whoops that's kind of stuck and this is a stalemate so instead of having your your king is stuck try to have your opponent's king stuck yeah so you want to still make quote unquote still make the king here yeah so that then you can exactly when it moves. oh yeah so you have it just tell me the move Go to. Uh, hmm? You want to give a check to C two. We we'll go to C three, no. But then. Oh, he, then he. Yeah. yeah. Um, check to C two. I mean, you kind of only have one good idea to win in this position. Rook C two. You could come back to it. Like you could just come back to this position, <laughs> but. Um, do you want more time or do you want me to just tell it? I gotta give more time. <laughs> sure? Alright. 
So the move to, to do is um, rook a1. So the idea is simply you just want to keep the king over here. And now you have to play g5. Yeah. And even though black manages to make a queen, it's not enough. Next one. Okay, it is white to move. Should be easy again. See, we have hearts, we have easies. Yep. Yeah, okay. And that's how we do it. All right. White's to move. Find me the draw. Most likely it's going to be stalemate, right? So what's the move you're thinking about? White king to g2. What? White king to g2. But the pawn is... I'm saying g, I'm sorry. <laughs> F, F2. Um, king F2, I think. The problem is rook e2. And if take queen, if king comes down, check and then queen. So think about checks first. Yeah, and the king has to come to g3. So now how do you try to do stalemate? Oh, then you lose your rook. Yeah, mad rook. Right? Everyone good? Cool. And yeah, this is draw. What if it doesn't? Oops, what? Are there options if uh, black doesn't click? I mean, black, if black moves, you just keep hunting down the rook. Let's go back. Yeah, exactly. So like, if not take, doesn't matter where the rook goes, you just keep following it. Cool. Whoops, that is not what I meant to do. Okay. Now, why to move?
right? H2? Mm -hmm. Cool. If king g3, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's about it. Um, I do think that if king g4, this is... Um, yeah, you could keep trying to give check and... Yeah, this is... This should be draw because the king can't come here because of rook f2, so... Cool. Whoops. Um, oh, we do have a cool game. Oh. All right, this position. Um, how would you proceed? I'll um, I will go a little bit farther. Now it's black to move. How do you continue? Just a hint, it is tactics. Strategic sacrifices. Stuff like that. H3? I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that is the correct move, but just <laughs> why, why do you say that? Just because I said sacrifice? Well, it's inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, um, I didn't see it the first time I was thinking about it. Like, I think it would have been kind of easier to see it if the pawn was still on H3, so you were like thinking about takes. But this is kind of a um, very interesting idea because, so black can't just try to, well technically black can try to just bring in the king and then just go, now just play something like bishop h3. But the problem is, uh, if you were to play something like a3, you can't really um, keep making progress. And even though it is very interesting and you could try to like keep pushing and then try to like bring the king here. Um, white still has to find the most accurate moves. It's not that easy. Like white just just doesn't have a draw. But um, a move such as bishop h3 is way more cool. And also, after white takes, now you don't have that kind of um, this bishop on the way, so you can try to bring in the king. But so what do you want to do now? And just because I said king, it doesn't mean it's king f5. <laughs> it could be, but... Yeah, I mean, king, f king f5 is not a bad move. Yeah, um, I remember when I was looking at this game, like before the sacrifice, I kind of wish that my pawn was a little bit more advanced and then I did the sacrifice and then I uh, thought to myself that if the pawn was advanced it also meant that the white king would be more to oh. central, yeah, more active, more centralized so probably it wouldn't have been as easy. But right now after king f2 the king gets to e4 just in time and next move you might want to push for d4 like if bishop takes f6 you might want to simply play d4 and it's kind of blocking it blocking the pawn um, the bishop coming back and now mm, you were going to play a3 so bishop has to come and cut it and now king goes to d3 
King comes to c4, you want to keep your pawns as long as possible, cutting the king. Now it's time to keep pushing for a3. Don't make these kind of mistakes and end up in a draw because the bishop comes to d4, just don't, don't, don't blunder. Always find the clean, and the most clean, um, the, the one that doesn't give your opponent as much chance. So a3 is that move and d2 and now it wins. And so the point is in this position and in the initial position when Black Shirov decided to sacrifice the bishop, mm, I think for him it was more like what's that what's the one move that kind of um annoys my opponent the most or like messes with him most psychologically and also doesn't give him any chance to to try to strike back because so a move like a3 is such a natural nice looking move and you have your pawn advanced to the extent that it can and now you could try to even like bring your king from the other side whoops um and it looks very logical but your white has a clear path white has a very clear idea to just keep the king in the center and um, just don't let the pawns be queens but in this situation white doesn't have that clear idea anymore now the king now uh, white's kind of just psychologically a little um, at it's not as easy that's what I'm trying to say and just don't try to make your opponent's life easy just try to keep them on their toes I guess so yeah what if, uh, take uh, yeah that's actually something that I thought about and if the king comes up you could just either push with the king and then take the pawn and still bring your king to the center or you could just uh, take the pawn here and bring your king to the center which I would kind of recommend for not making your opponent's life easy and bringing your king in first what if, what if he Mm, well still the, the point is about getting the king to the center so like even if you would play something like king e3 and just no, want to this one yeah. well I, it doesn't really matter I still get my king to the center this bishop doesn't really play any role in the game it wasn't it was kind of never about the bishop it was more about in this um, in this position if this bishop wasn't here King was go king would go to yeah, f5 e4 like yeah. The, yeah something yeah so the bishop technically could go anywhere else pretty much but bishop on h3 has more um, psychological effect also is attacking g2 because if you were to simply play bishop g4 the king could come to f2 and then the king could come to e3 but in yeah. this situation yeah, king e3 the pawn out is, is either by yeah. Double yeah. Well, this one, this one was one of my favorite ones, and um, I think it's a very cool way to end today's lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, um, and yeah, end games are pretty fun. Just know some basic rules and keep your pieces active.